the weather is changing again. <laughs> it's warming up. <laughs> I think I got spoiled from it being so cooled off for a while that now as it warms back up, it's like, oh my gosh, the heat is back. And it's fun because as you adapt and learn that God is with you in all circumstances, you change and become malleable. You become easily entreated by the Lord to do and to go where He would have you to go and to speak those things He would have you to say and to be the person that you may not have known it, but you always wanted to be, that He makes you into becoming. In streams, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, I will multiply your seed as the stars in the heaven, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Genesis 22, 16, 18. And from that day to this, men have been learning that when, at God's voice, they surrender up to him the one thing above all else that was dearest to them, that by him a thousand times I think I need to reread that one. <laughs> it sounds weird, the sentence. And from that day to this, men have been learning that when, at God's voice, they surrender up to him the one thing, above all else that was dearest to them, by him a thousand times over. Abraham gives up his one and only son at God's call, and with this disappear all his hopes for the boy's life and manhood, and for a noble family bearing his name. But the boy is restored. The family becomes as the stars and sands in number, and out of it, in the fullness of time, appears Jesus Christ. This is just the way God meets every real sacrifice of every child of His. We surrender all. We accept poverty. He sends wealth. We renounce a rich field of service. He sends us a richer one than we had ever dreamed of. We give up all our cherished hopes and die unto self. He sends us the life more abundant and tingling joy. And the crown of it all is Jesus, for we have never known the fullness of the sacrifice. The earthly founder of the family of Christ must commence by losing himself and his only son, just as the heavenly founder of that family did. We cannot be members of that family with the full privileges and joys of membership upon any other basis, but to give up that which we hold dearest. We sometimes seem to forget that what God takes, He takes in fire. And that the only way to the resurrection life and the ascension mount is the way of the garden, the cross, and the grave. Think not, O soul of man, that Abraham's was a unique and solitary experience. So to Abraham, so to you. It is simply a specimen and pattern of God's dealing with all souls who are prepared to obey Him at whatever the cost. Have you counted the cost? After you have patiently endured, you shall receive the promise. The moment of supreme sacrifice shall be the moment of supreme and rapturous blessing. God's river, which is full of water, shall burst its banks and pour upon you a tide of wealth and grace. There is nothing indeed which God will not do for a man who dares to step out upon what seems to be the mist, though as he puts his foot down, he finds a rock beneath him. You know, I think one of the things that is wrong in the world right now of Christendom when we look at faith and we talk about people who attend church is that so often the message is given about having an abundant life but not about a sacrificial one. A lot of times people talk about how they can have peace, love, and joy but not at what cost they must pay in order to attain to that place of rest in His grace, because it's easier to tell someone what they're going to get than what they have to give up. You see, Jesus said that if you don't hate your family, if you don't hate your mother, your father, your children even, that you could not be His disciples. And what He meant by that was pretty specific. He meant that, in reality, if you become a Christian, you will find that the members of your own household will be at odds with you. You'll find that in order to follow Jesus, when he says to be faithful to him and his word, to do those things that he's commanded you to do, that you're going to cause friction 
and you will have to give up your family to God in order that you might gain a greater family, which is all brothers and sisters in Christ. So, I think sometimes the message is lost about take up your cross and follow Jesus. If you're sitting on your promises and you've gotten saved and you've never had a struggle or a trial and you don't have to give up anything and you've just gotten away with it, so to speak, I question whether or not you know what salvation is. Because the reality is, is that it's not simply moving from one happy camp to another, but rather you have to deny yourself. And at some point in time, the reality of that's going to sink in. And you'll find that you're the most selfish person there is on the face of the earth. And the reason I know that, because I am. When we deny ourselves, we allow Jesus in us to live. When he is living in us, then he will speak through us and accomplish his purposes when we deny ourselves. It's obvious when you look at a Christian whether or not it's the Lord speaking through them, living in them, and being manifest by them. Because you can tell whether or not they're seeking themselves and their glory or that of the person who lives in them, which is Jesus. So, the greatest in the kingdom would be the servant of all. And the least in the kingdom would be the most selfish person you know. Which if you look in the mirror, you're going to find is not only you, but me too. So we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus.